So I made the really disturbing discovery the other day that Fallout 3 is actually 16 years old now, which is the age I was when I started playing it. So I thought I'd share something that really stuck with me from Fallout 3 that no game or real piece of media has actually managed to capture since. And that I have really mixed feelings about, because on the one hand, I think it's genuinely really clever, but on the other hand, it's got really, really disturbing implications. So I'm gonna weave this tale for you, and it's gonna require a little bit of backstory, so bear with me, please. So this tale begins on my second playthrough of Fallout 3. My first one was on console, and the second one I did when I did my, uh, I got my gaming PC. Uh, so I was trying to experience more of the side content, because when I played it for the first time, I was very main quest focused, which is a very weird way to play a Bethesda RPG, but I didn't do the 10 penny tower quest the first time round. So I wanted to rectify this mistake on my second playthrough, where I was playing the goodest boy around. My first time I played when I was 16, I, I was like, I'm gonna be the truest neutral lad, uh, I'm gonna be mercenary all the way through. But my second time I was like, no, 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 I'm more familiar with this game, I wanna try and make the morally good decisions, I want to be a good lad. So then, cute, 10 penny tower, I'm like, right, I'm gonna do this content and um, really make the best decision, make everyone happy. Because the thing, I I'd heard the uh, radio broadcast, Three Dog said, where he goes like, oh, g come on, Tenpenny, be nice to them ghouls. They're good old lads. I love them. Mwah. So already going in, I've got the preconception that evil Tenpenny versus the good old ghouls, you know. Everyone's telling me the ghouls are innocent, they did nothing wrong. Tenpenny is an evil meanie, which you've got plenty of reason to believe. Three Dog is always up there shit-talking him, and then you hear about the, the stuff with Mr. Burke, where he's like, hey, do you want to murder this whole town just for funsies? So already I'm like, fuck this Tenpenny guy, sounds like a prick, let's go mash his brains in. You know, and I'm up for a bit of regicide, why not? So first impressions aren't great, and they're made even worse when I get up there and there's this ghoul knock on the door basically begging to get in going please let me in daddy I'll be good and I'm just sort of stood there awkwardly observing this interaction waiting for this cutscene essentially to end uh and the guard is really unsympathetic he's like no go away you greasy skinny fuck so the ghoul waddles away all sad and I have my turn on the intercom I convince the guard that I'm not either a a zombie or b worse poor and I get in and I basically just ask him what the fuck so the guard kind of makes things worse by telling me that ghoul is a leader of a bunch of other ghouls that essentially want to come just live in Tenfany Tower and just have a warm home. And he's been paid to take care of them. Uh, but he's too lazy, so he's going to give me some money to make them go away, wink wink nudge nudge. Which already pretty shady. Now, I'm in good boy mode at the moment, so I'm like, okay, maybe just the guards corrupt. I'm sure a lot of the other citizens will be nice, and I'll be able to find someone here who's a lot more receptive of this. So I poke around, and everyone else seems to have this attitude of, oh yeah, you're the guy that's gonna get rid of our ghoul problem. And I'm, I'm getting the vibe that the, none of these people in here are really good people, besides Herbert Daring Dashwood upstairs, who is the Eternal King. For anyone who doesn't know who he is, he's essentially this old adventurer who used to travel around with a ghoul companion. So he's the first person to really give you a pat on the head and say, good job for not being racist. Which made me think, right, okay, so I'm doing the right thing by trying to help the ghouls, but no one here really seems that receptive to this idea of letting them live here. And it was really disconcerting for me at this point because I'm here trying to be the goodest lad I can. And the game is telling me at basically every opportunity, these guys are all pricks. But you know, something tells me that massacring an entire society just so someone else can move in isn't exactly the most hero-like activity. So I was like, okay, surely there's gotta be something else I can do. And I'm out of ideas at this point. So I'm gonna go ask the ghouls themselves what's up. So I fight through this little tunnel filled with very all ghouls and gas and honestly it's really not very safe but I make it to their little hideout and ask them and he's obviously like yeah you know ten penny tower full of assholes I've got this plan get this we're gonna flood their whole place full of feral ghouls is gonna murder them all and it's gonna be our tower it'll be ghoul tower from that point onwards and listening to this you know alarm bells are going off in my head you know heroes don't do genocides generally. And all this talk of mass murder is really getting my noggin jogging. I was genuinely wondering at this point if the game was going to make me decide which group of assholes was I going to have to wipe out. Because, you know, although the ghouls slightly have more of a reason to be mad because they, you know, they, they want the warm homes uh, and Tenpenny's not giving it to them, it is still their tower. You know, if some creepy guy walked at my front door and was like, hey, you know, I'm homeless, can I have a bed? I would like, swiftly close that door. So I can't entirely blame them for wanting to send the ghouls away. But while I'm in the middle of uh, deciding which war crime is slightly more ethical, I see it right there, a dialogue option where my goody two shoes little bitch, he decides to say, I think we can come to a peaceful uh, conclusion. And I'm like, yes, I've done it. I'm gonna be a good lad. 
I will be on Santa's nice list, and Jesus himself will descend down from the heavens to say, Leroy, you have redeemed all gamers because you are the true ethical gamer, or something gay like that. So I left click that shit in a single frame, and the ghoul leader, Roy Phillips, gives me a fucking look and goes like, oh, sure, you think we could all be buddies? How about you go ask them, and then when they call you a gay retard, you can come back to us, and we can do our plan. So I say I bet and charge up to the top of Tenpenny Tower and kick open Alistair Tenpenny's door himself to give him shit about this. I say, hey, you old curmudgeonly bastard, we are gonna have the ghouls live here and you are gonna like it. And he just goes, okay. And I'm like, say what? Yeah, I don't mind having the ghouls live here, as long as they're civilized and behave themselves. Now this, dear viewer, is the first time this quest really throws a curveball at you. Because, you know, I've, I've been led to believe that these people all hate the ghouls, nothing is gonna change. And I go to the man in charge and he's like, yeah, sure, whatever, you know what I mean? Now this sort of set me into a sort of miniature crisis, really, because I'm sat here thinking, oh my god, if I misjudge this whole situation, I feel slightly guilty for briefly considering genocide there for a second. I'm thinking, could this all be potentially one big miss? understanding or maybe that one guard was corrupt all along or maybe there are just some few bad apples that we need to get rid of that are causing this problem maybe we can all get along maybe we can all be friends uh, but then he says it and I think oh of course he tells me I've got to let certain residents know and have them agree to it before the ghouls can move in so I'm like ah right okay so this is the wrinkle this is how this is where the grayness comes in I'm thinking maybe Tenpenny has like a council or something that make decisions on who can move in and who can't so they need to be convinced and this is why he can't do it Tenpenny's actually not as in charge as we think he's got to do this democratically and I'm thinking wow okay so Tenpenny isn't just a tyrant who just does what he wants he actually lets people in his his tower like decide on things and I'm thinking oh, maybe he's a better guy than I thought however this was the second time this quest was gonna mess with my brain and I'll get to why in a second so the next hour of my life was basically spent being a ghoul Jehovah's Witness walking up to people and saying hello are you ready to accept the cause of the ghouls into your life and what you've basically got to do is you've got to tell these people you've got to pass a speech check to get them to agree to not be racist or you can make them leave and making them leaving is basically just next level social engineering. Cause all I really do is walk up to them and be like, ah, if you don't want to be with the ghouls, you gotta leave buddy. And they just agree. Like I've, I've been given no power. Tenpenny hasn't said, oh, if they don't agree with it, they've got to leave. I'm just telling them this. And they're going, fine, I'm gonna go make my own Tenpenny tower with blackjack and hookers. So effectively what I'm doing is I'm telling these people, you need to better yourself as a person. You need to realize we're all the same deep down. You need to get rid of your ghoul prejudice and racism and come be a better person. And, or you can leave. Now keep that in mind for later, it's very important. So the quest ends with me kicking out or converting all the ghoul racists. Tenpenny allows the ghouls to move in. I go to Roy Phillips and he's like, eh, eh, really? And they move in and I think everything's all happily ever after. I walk away into the sunset with a good feeling in my tum tum thinking, wow, I've done it. I've overcome racism. I really am a good person. Until... Fast forward a couple months, I'm in the Point Lookout DLC in somewhere in Maryland, and for story reasons, I'm currently holding a piece of my brain in a little bottle, and I'm wondering what the fuck do I do with this thing? So I go onto a Fallout forum and think, what does this thing do? Uh, can I do anything with this brain piece? Do I just have a mutilated part of my skull in my inventory for the rest of the game? So I'm scrolling down and uh, one lad says, okay, it, it's part of a, 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 a cut perk that makes your head harder to cripple. And I'm like, okay, that's interesting, but if that's cut, I can't do this. So I scroll down further and I see the post. Now this post was the catalyst to what I'm about to tell you. And I don't know genuinely to this day whether this person on this forum was trying to troll. Was this bait? Because I found out what he said wasn't true, but it led me to a rather horrifying discovery. So this post said, what you do with the piece of brain is you give it to the ghoul leader from the quest I just told you about. Uh, and he gives you something for it. So I think, oh right yo, all I'll do is I'll pop on down, I'll give him the brain piece. Bit stereotypical that the guy who doesn't want to be called a zombie wants a brain piece, but I must get something cool for it, so let's go have a gander. So I'm wandering on over there thinking about how this is the place where I cause the ghoul utopia to exist, where humans and ghouls can live in complete harmony. And I'm thinking, wow, this is such a great place, I'm so glad I put in the effort to do the hard version of this quest and make everyone happy. I get inside, and there's a suspicious lack of humans. Uh, and I go up to the lady who runs the ammo counter because I need to restock. And uh, there's a dialogue up and says, hey, uh, where did the lady go that runs this? And the ghoul there is, she's kind of like, oh, um, yeah, she, she, she left. <laughs> so I start snooping and I very quickly find a basement 
filled with human bodies. And I'm like, oh my fucking god. And I, I, all the bodies are labelled. It's all the uh, the residents there. Even Herbert Daring Dashwood, who liked ghouls and thought they were chill, they murdered him too. And I was like, oh my goodness. So I'm immediately in what the fuck, what the fuck, what the fuck mode. And I, I run up those stairs straight to Roy Phillips, who's on the top floor. And I'm like, buddy, what the hell? And he goes, oh, you know what, man? They were a bunch of knobheads anyway. I'd watch your step unless you want to join them. Now this really hit me like a ton of bricks. This absolute bastard, this complete and utter knobhead, had the nerve to sit there and complain about ghoul bigotry and how unfairly he was treated, and to pull on my little heartstrings, only to then turn around and murder everyone who was gracious enough to be nice to him, to give them a roof to sit under, and he just sits there and goes, Oh, you know, better be nice, I should want to join them. I have never felt more justified in any game taking someone's head off until right there, right then. This has stayed with me because it felt so personal, you know what I mean? Like, I, whenever you watch a movie and a character's betrayed, you know, you sort of think, oh, you're a dickhead. But it felt so personal just because, genuinely, I had to go so far out of my way to do the good ending. You know, you're giving up the caps, you're giving up all the loot you'd earn, and it takes a, a lot longer because you've got to pass all these speech checks, you've got to convince all these people to leave, and you're trying genuinely, or well, I was trying to genuinely be a good person and do the right thing and make people actually happy in this place and you realize that all that effort basically went to none because the person you were trying to help was a snake in wolf or a sheep or, i forget the term see this is making me so upset i've forgotten my idioms it's just so messed up to turn this idea of wanting to help and wanting to be a good person against the player in such an aggressive way that you won't even know. Like, I literally only went back because I read a forum from some random chuckle fuck who I'm, I'm starting to think was starting to set me up, to be honest. Uh, but like, you know, it's completely reasonable that I would never go back. I would just finish that thing and I've done the good ending because I didn't think that for so long I thought I just got the good ending. And to make it worse, the thing that hurts the most is the fact that the residents that leave, um, their racism saved them. It's a real big mixed message. It almost tells you that, hey, you know, the fact that they were racist led them to survive. And I'm not sure how to feel about that, to be honest. Todd, what are you doing? This quest really made me reconsider my morality in games because I usually tend to go for the routes that cause the least people to die. But quests like this really made me consider that if the game is leading you to like what seems like a peaceful option, it's not always the best choice. I remember I considered this choice when I did the quest in New Vegas where you've got to clear out the basement of the Nightkin. And it's like the game sort of pushes you to be like, hey, the good option is to like peacefully get them out by like sneaking and giving them the uh, Stealth Boy Manifesto. But ultimately, if you think about the quest logically, do we really want a bunch of invisible Incredible Hulks just running across the wasteland? I don't really know if that's a good idea. But honestly, it's also a really great example of Fallout 3 actually giving you a, like, a morally grey choice, to be honest. Because really, there's no way to be, like, a 100% a good person in this quest. And when people try to pull out examples of Fallout 3 having grey quests, because it doesn't have that many from my recollection, this one never really seems to come up for some reason, and I'm not sure why, because it's a great example. Like, you either massacre the ghouls and look like a prejudiced asshole, or you let the ghouls in and have all the people that live in Tenpenny Tower as not great people as they are, they don't deserve to die just because of the ghouls, you know what I mean? Also, this quest gave me huge second thoughts on listening to Three Dog, because whenever I do this quest again, whenever Roy Phillips is banging on the front door, I just immediately murder him right there and then, because I'm just like, I'm not dealing with this shit. Uh, and whenever I do that, Three Dog will always get on his high horse on the radio and go, Lone Wanderer? What the fuck? Are you some sort of ghoul hater? And it really makes me question, like, how much Three Dog actually knows and how much he can actually be trusted. Because if you think about it, he's up there in his little ivory tower, protected by the Brotherhood. How much does he really know? And isn't his, like, reporting, like, based upon what other people have seen, not necessarily his own opinions? He could be being fed bias information that's just fed out- Oh god, this is like a fake news rant, isn't it? Controversial Three Dog rant aside, uh, this quest has kind of stuck with me for this exact reason. I felt betrayed, my feelings were played with, uh, 8 out of 10 would do again. This quest has stuck with me for, like, the last 12 years. Uh, I hope it still sticks with me till the actual year 2077, where I'll be rambling it to the- the nurses in the dementia ward. Anyway, Anyway, thank you for listening to my rambling for this long. Comment Roy Phillips did nothing wrong if you've made it in this far. And uh, I hope you have a good day. Mwah.